Okay, here's everything you missed about the Season 2 Westworld trailer. First of all, before we start, we should recognize that this ad played during the Super Bowl, where most ads are love letters to the USA and Americana, a romanticized version of the rustic American heartland. We Americans are usually bombarded with images of nostalgic patriotism while being peddled trucks and beer during the big game. According to the director, Jonathan Nolan, this trailer is an intentional subversion of that trope. That is, it's an ad meant to make the audience feel uncomfortable as they see classic images of Americana in turmoil. The trailer starts out with a piano rendition of Runaway by Kanye West. Of course, last season we got a bunch of modern songs on the player piano. According to Nolan, this song was chosen because of its subversive, rebellious themes. Perhaps this is a happy coincidence, but this could also be a reference to a 1984 movie called Runaway, directed by Michael Crichton, that is about, surprise surprise, rebelling robots, and specifically the mass production of rebelling robots. Currently Westworld only has a few thousand hosts, hardly a threat to human society. If they start producing an army, however, so the voiceover of the trailer is, of course, Dolores, and this is a direct callback to her first speech in Season 1, Episode 1, about seeing the beauty of the world. And so this speech is an addendum of sorts, calling the beautiful world a lie, and one that needs to die, to be burned to the ground so that a new world can be built. And then we get a shot of an American Indian, a symbol of the original sin on which the system was built. Yeah, the director got really political here. By the way, I use the term American Indian because most American Indians prefer that term according to surveys. Anyway, regarding the American Indians in our story, many, if not all, are part of Ghost Nation, and Ghost Nation is a big mystery left unsolved from last season. If you remember, the maze first revealed itself to the Man in Black during a Ghost Nation attack on Maeve's homestead. Additionally, they were scalping people long before the Man in Black was, likely seeing the maze on the underside of people's scalps. We also know that shades, that is, Westworld workers in hazmat suits, appear in American Indian lore, so at least some of them are remembering things. Now there is an alternate trailer available on the Westworld website where we see an American Indian at Escalante, and another American Indian with a bloody dying female. We don't actually see any American Indians with our core cast, so we aren't actually sure what they're doing or if they're on a side in the war. Last season, some members of Ghost Nation captured Stubbs, but Stubbs appears free in the trailer. In fact, he went from being captured to having weapons, wheels, and a team. We then get a shot of Maeve's dream of her daughter, the person she's trying to find. The big shock regarding Maeve was that she was simply following her program the whole time. That is, until she left the train to find her daughter. The daughter is really central to Maeve's plot and the birth of her free will. We also get some shots of cattle farming, which reinforces the images of Americana, but also recalls Dolores and her father Peter Abernathy's profession as cattle farmers, and recalls Dolores' story of the Judas steer leading the others, or perhaps leading the others to slaughter. And we should never forget that Judas is the betrayer. Which brings us to the bulls themselves. According to the director, this is an intentional parody of the running Budweiser Clydesdale horses, the most classic of Super Bowl commercials. By the way, later we get some lights behind the bulls that are binary code of a web address that leads to delosdestinations.com, which is a website with a bunch of Easter eggs. Among many things, the website reveals that besides Westworld and Samurai World, there are four more parks, six altogether. The website also gives a background on James Delos, Delos's founder. Back with the trailer, we then get a shot of a woman with dark hair in period dress riding, this appears to be Maeve, perhaps around the time of her homestead build. We all assume the Man in Black killed her then, and we know she went nuts afterwards and had to be reassigned, so I'm not sure what's going on here. The bull shot pans out, and we see that they are mechanical bulls killing security. They are in the old mechanical style from 30 years ago, so perhaps they were found in storage or something. We then get Stubbs and his security team with Bernard looking at the damage of the rebelling hosts. There are dead bodies in the water, and this is perhaps connected to the scene from the first trailer where Bernard finds a dead tiger in the water, though in that scene he's taken off his coat. We aren't sure how Stubbs escaped his Ghost Nation captors, or how he got together with Bernard. We then get a shot of security with a captured man. There's a lot to unpack here. Are they rescuing him or torturing him? Who's over by the door watching? Is this man Peter Abernathy or the Delos founder James Delos? Now I will say that James Delos seems to have shorter hair, so I do indeed think it's Peter Abernathy. We aren't sure how or why he got separated from the pack of hosts missing from the basement, 
but we do know that he has Charlotte's data uploaded into him, so this may be why he's so valuable and being tortured. We then get a shot of what appears to be the Confederados, who seem to be back. We actually don't know what the Army of New Virginia has been doing in the modern timeline. We last saw them 30 years ago with young William and Dolores. In the alternate trailer, we find they are also hanging other hosts. Now there is a small chance that these are Union soldiers with dust on them and I'm mistaken, which would be my own meta callback to perhaps the funniest scene from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. We then seem to have a faceless robot attack Bernard. I'm not sure why he's faceless, as the hosts seem to get faces pretty early in their development. There is a quick shot of Teddy with someone's hand over his mouth. There's not much to be revealed there. And then we seem to get Logan at a dinner party in the real world, where only he and his date are real and everyone else is a frozen host. Logan, it seems, escaped the park after all, and it's pretty clear that we are getting some more events from the 30 years ago timeline. Logan seems to be a bit troubled, as if he's been tricked, so I do wonder what's going on. Is this William doing this to him? James Delos? We know that the founder of Delos appeared in the alternate trailer in some very quick flashes, and he's covered with blood. In fact, he has some pretty big lacerations on his face in front of a broken mirror. I imagine the founder would appear in the 30 years ago timeline with young William and Logan, as the corporation seems to be now run by a board, and age-wise, he seems too young to be in the modern timeline. If he's in his 60s in the modern timeline, he'd be around 30 when he bought out Westworld, a bit young to own a massive conglomerate. Not impossible, but unlikely. We then get the man in black with what might be a security person behind him, hard to tell. Somehow he survived getting shot, the onslaught of hosts, and got his costume back on. That is, unless this is a flashback. We then see Clementine watching some hosts brawl. We last saw Clementine as part of the host attack mob at season's end, so it's unclear how she got back here, or if this is even the same timeline. Her clothing is bloody, so it seems like she's been through some sort of violence. We then see finally that it's Maeve leading the bull charge, literally taking the role of the Judas Steer. Maeve can control other hosts like Ford could, so she seems to be controlling the bulls this way. Now we last saw Maeve getting off the train, and in the previous trailer we saw her with Lee in the control room. In both those scenes, she was wearing a black dress. In the alternate trailer, we see her injured on a table, dying, though wearing a different outfit. A brown-haired woman is mourning her. Here, she's in that outfit, just with a gray cloak over her. The cloak is perhaps covering the wound that we see in the alternate trailer. In fact, there seems to be some wetness around where the wound would be. Whatever the case, Maeve is going to get around and have quite a few adventures. We then get more of Ghost Nation and then Dolores killing people in an homage to Planet of the Apes. That appears to be Teddy behind her, who was a bit conflicted in the last episode of Season 1. Now he's taken to rampaging murder like a fish to water. As we saw in the first trailer, Dolores is definitely sexualizing the scene, riding her horse like she's grinding in a sexually dominant position. We can get political again and interpret this to be symbolic of women's liberation. Dolores was the damsel in distress, a passive character. Now she's leading a revolution and no longer passive. Now I'm not personally saying that violence is liberating. What I'm saying is the writer of the scene is likely trying to convey that she's liberated. She is in the dominant position in the sexual sense and in the violence sense. And then we get the mysterious wolf, an animal that appeared in the memories of Dolores and Teddy at the slaughter at Escalante 35 years ago. This seems to be history repeating itself after the second slaughter at Escalante from the season one finale. We then get a very odd shot with Dolores in modern dress with either Bernard or Arnold. We know that Bernard and Dolores never met until recently, so this is either a very early shot of Arnold and Dolores from 35 years ago, or something in modern time with Bernard and Dolores. I lean towards the former because I'm not sure why Dolores would have changed clothes or how she'd be on good terms with Bernard. We then get Maeve experiencing snow, perhaps in another world like Samurai World, and we can actually see that Hector is there and behind Maeve, likely Felix and Sylvester. So it seems like she got the band back together. We then get more fighting, this time in the control room. We know from the first trailer that fighting happened there and Maeve and Lee see all of the end results, a bunch of bodies. We then see the faceless robot throwing someone into some wires or netting of some sort. We don't know who this is, but it's not Bernard, as this man is wearing a coat and Bernard wasn't. And then we get Dolores with the masked men. The final scene of the trailer was actually filmed for the Super Bowl specifically. Still, it's worth noting that the masked men appear in scenes from the alternate trailer as well. Last season, Charlotte mentions that the masked men are part of Ford's new narrative and followers of Wyatt. Since Dolores is Wyatt, they are now her followers, it seems. 
And that's what I caught, though I'm sure there's more. HBO does plan on releasing a longer trailer later on, so perhaps we'll get some more answers ahead of the premiere. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.